Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good afternoon everybody. It's Sunday afternoon. I hope everybody had a really good weekend. It's been a really powerful week. I think everybody can have, has seen that there's so much information and it's all seeming to coming together. And as we've talked about in the recent times is that it's like a convergence of many things and there's gonna be bits and pieces of it still coming together. And I think everybody should uh, feel you know happy. Uh, I hope everybody's rested. I know that some of the folks uh, like Gigi went to the beach um, and sorry for hearing about some of the, the uh, sadly, <laughs> oceans are oceans and they have, they have fish that bite. So I think a couple of people got hurt, but hey, uh, I hope they all are getting better and rest well. But the bottom line is, is that uh, we all have a good weekend. And I know that there's a lot of people out there struggling. And I think uh, what we try to do is provide a little bit of support for you with uh, the good that's coming out and the hope that we uh, see um, in the progress. Uh, Iraq is um, coming to fruition. It, it isn't what we heard about 2016. It's none of that. It's actually uh, finally coming to uh, a head where they're going to uh, a private sector. And it's different than a rent, uh, oil rent economy. And that private sector is going to drive this uh, whole thing, this tripartite budget that we're still waiting for to see them have it in the Gazette, so to speak. Um, not necessarily that's the most important part, but the point is, is that it was already in the Gazette back in June of 2023. And what we're seeing now is that they have some amendments because that budget gave some uh, um, ability for the government to make amendments. And obviously that uh, we haven't seen the oil turn on yet with Turkey. We haven't seen many things happen. And so the reasons for that is we believe that they have to have asset valuation that goes with uh, turning that oil on. And then just like the water, and many other things, uh, the contracts that they're doing for the tri tripartite budget, um, the investment side is different than the operational side. And so what we're gonna see is that um, the tripartite budget takes into consideration the operational side of the budget and the investment side. And uh, you need to have these investors to be able to have protections and we see all that stuff has been taking place. So in the past, but today, so interestingly enough, a uh, government consultant has come out and said, the single window will complete applications for industrial projects in 15 days. That's a couple of weeks. But the, you know, they're completing applications for the industrial projects, but we all know that there's been a lot of stuff that's already been in place. Uh, but this is just giving more uh, timing of like, hey, other people are coming into town and they're gonna do business. That's how I see it, other entities. Because we already know that there's been many entities. We've had tenders, we've had all that stuff coming and going for quite some time. The thing about it is, is the investment side is that they're gonna have to pay for that. And they're going to have to do that in a manner that is uh, what we're looking for. The manner that shows that um, they're going to have a currency, okay? A currency that um, has, as this article is going to state. And the article, it states, okay, the advisor for the Prime Minister for, for Industry, Development, and the Private Sector, Hamoudi Al-Lami, announced today on Sunday a single window for the establishment of the industrial projects and the submission mechanism while stressing the, comp the, well, the completion of applications for industrial projects through that window will take about 15 days. The government's plan uh, is to support the private sector and that, that's obvious. That's the whole point of a tripartite budget. Uh, basically, what is it for? It's for job opportunities for the young, thousands of graduates annually, etc. The private sector will provide job opportunities and will support the economy and provide hard currency for the country. It will provide hard currency for the country. What I find about interesting about that is that they're talking about a currency that doesn't depreciate, doesn't fluctuate very much, or greatly in value. It doesn't do that. That's what a hard currency is. It's real simple. You guys just Google hard currency in the definition, and you're going to find that, wow, uh, militiaman at patreon.com forward slash mm and crew has that information, and or you can get it uh, in Google 
easily enough, but check out the articles that coincide and tie that little bit of information in. It's, it's real stuff. Okay, it's cool. Um, I'm going to just say that it looks like they're starting to ramp it up. That's where I come from. Um, and they're getting results. Uh, they're narrowing time frames to get performance that shows that us that they have timelines. We all we all know that they have timelines. Um, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Planning, they're all involved. So this uh, single wing si single window uh, situation is actually uh, fascinating because industrial projects, you guys, they take a lot of money to build industry like refineries and all that stuff. It, it's big money. So keep that in mind. But they're getting ready to do that, and countries coming from all over the world are are, are stepping up to the plate, and uh, are getting, uh, I guess, effectively excited. So, here's another article that's pretty fascinating: is that the Association of Private Banks of Iraq witnessed a major revolution in widespread change in electronic payment tools. I'm pretty sure this is going to be about the size of payments. And the amount of them okay so the Iraqi private banks Association confirms today again on Sunday witnessed a major revolution and a wide change in the level of it use of electronic payments tools in 2023 and while indicating a significant increase in the size and number of electronic payments operations so they've done nothing but kind of, I guess, knock it out of the park, so to speak. There's probably three paragraphs there, but you know, you'll have to you can come in again. Association of Private Banks is the headline, and, and more. Uh, but they go on to say the government has approved the adoption of electronic payment uh, in government's private institutions, indicating that Iraq has also witnessed a significant increase in the volume of operations and the number of operations related to the electronic payment in addition to an increase in the number of bank cards. So it's saturation is a big deal. And doubling of a number of electronic payment points. So they're giving more and more saturation to pay, uh, point of sales. Um, there's, there has been a big change. They're openly stating it, end quote. He stressed that this year will witness a significant and tangible change for the citizens. Okay, well, 1310, if going into the future, is not going to be a significant, tangible <laughs> change. I don't, at least I don't see it. I don't see it whatsoever. We already know that al Alak has said that he was going to have to delete the zeros. We know that al-Sudani said the dinar is going to be stronger than the dollar. And, and we have had it on record, I believe it's in April. There's a video out by al-Sudani. I believe there's, I believe, I believe there's communication from um, al Alak reiterating it. I think there's stuff in um, early 2024, uh, hammering it out, saying the same thing, just like there was in 20, uh, 2023 in July 26th with al Alak specifically stating, as you can find in Patreon, the deletion of the Zeros project still begins. Uh, and we all know that. We're not going to go over it again. But if when you drop three zeros, it creates value. It's that simple. Uh, and when you add a real effective exchange rate to that value that's created from dropping the three zeros, that's where the fireworks begin. The electronic payment systems are going to be interlinked. Uh, with international banks and financial institutions globally, in my view. The central bank's success now appears to be at a level of saturation that is acceptable and by far noticeable from the previous years and in, and in many ways. Look, the citizens are going to experience tangible effects from the work that has been accomplished successfully where it comes to electronic payments. I think we all kind of can see that by now. The amount of cards has increased to the citizens and the point of sales uh, on the street have doubled in locational payment points. So they, they, they've doubled it all in good time. They've done that and it's, it's, we've been watching it as, they, as they're going. It's been fascinating. So look, keep that in mind and realize that um, the efforts are just absolutely, I think, phenomenal. Um, we don't have a date and rate, but we all know that uh, we can see that Iraq is going to a market economy in the private sector. So it's going to take an international presence. It's going to take that international stage. It's going to take them coming back to their rightful place in the, in the region and in, in international markets. And they talk about all that stuff. So everybody should be grounded. I know it's taking a long time. Many, many people have been around 10, 20 years, right? Five years, three years. But 
it just goes to show though that this study that we've had is uh, pretty fascinating and it's unbelievable and here's another uh, fascinating event that's taken place that even gives more support for what I'm talking about. Uh, Iraq bids farewell to the list of high-risk countries. Well, we all know that when I just say that, we've already heard talk about them going from a black list to a gray list, all right? Um, the, 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 here it goes, I'm sorry, forgive me, everybody. It says the observers and specialists in the political affairs express their optimism about Iraq's exit from the list of high-risk countries that was officially announced by the International Task Force last week. So that's the FATF, the International Task Force. Noting that the International Declaration represents an important step in correct path the Sudanese government is taking in achieving reforms, financial and economic, along with political, political stability. So they're basically talking about a lot there. Uh, they're having financial and economic stability, political stability, and they're also talking about uh, a declaration, an international declaration. Isn't that what we're going for? We're talking about going public in the international world? Hey, from that, basically, what we're going to see is that Iraq's exit from the uh, follow-up area that they call it, uh, and from that high list that risk, high risk of countries, according to the announcement from the FATF, is a very important step. That's a quote from them. And you really should embrace that. Uh, the announcement of the International Bank came as a result of reforms carried out by the Central Bank of Iraq. So they're giving credit to the Central Bank of Iraq, as well as the procedures and reforms of the Office of Combating Money Laundering and the Financing of Terrorism. Okay, so they go on to say, Iraq's exit from the list uh, also comes as a result of the legislation of anti-money laundering law, number 39 of 2015. So it, it's been on the books for, what, nine years? And also the establishment of the Anti-Money Laundering Council. They explain under the announcement of the implementing uh, working group, Iraq has been become outside the monitoring and follow-up process. So they've done something. They're outside that monitoring. Why? They're not even being monitored. Perfect. And this means that it has regained the confidence of the group. Isn't it pretty interesting that they use the uh, terms regain confidence? Remember Dabo, restore confidence to the international financial system? Iraq was going to be previously in December, or no, September of 2023. They talked about... Uh, the savior effectively of the international financial and global financial system? Yeah, they did. But here, check it out. It says, by restoring confidence, <laughs> Iraq uh, can play a major and pivotal role in the region and in the world. So basically, they're reiterating what they've already said. So this is like the third time, at least in writing, okay? This step will also make Iraq a destination and a source of interest for major international development and investment companies. Of course it will. We already knew all that, but now they're just reiterating. It's, it's, it's fascinating, you guys. Uh, he goes, thus, Iraq is no longer subject to monitoring and follow-up by the International Finan and Financial a Action Task Force. God, they use so many long terms, uh, but that's okay. So this guy says, for his part, the political analyst, uh, his name was Al Al Abadr, Ali Al Abadr, and he states that within his interview that Iraq's exit from the list of the most corrupt countries is evidence that the Sudanese government is not a government of services, as it is referred to, but rather a reform government that has achieved many political and governmental aspects and prevented a lot of cases of corruption. I'm pretty sure that the crime of the century falls into place, okay? Uh, that so-called 57 trillion that went missing, I think that was uh, a big mistake on a lot of people's parts. Um, maybe an embarrassing one, but anyway. Iraq's exit from the list of uh, confirms the important steps that the government has worked on. Uh, from here, we can look at the deep vision with the with which the authority dealt with and uh, method of implementing it, its services programs in a reform manner, many of which were directed towards preventing corruption, such as activating the electronic automation, like the borders, right? 
uh, airports, all that stuff. And there's also, and wait, state institutions too. Don't, don't forget that. I mean, the government has gone electronic payments, right? RTGS, Central Bank talked about that. Okay. There's also awareness socially. It, it contributed to rejecting the uh, cases of rampant corruption on all those recent years. And he's finally explaining towards the end, it says the fingerprints of al-Sudani. So the fingerprints of al-Sudani are placed on the wheel of reform that were reflected positively on the projects and the clarity of the vision for many matters related to services and reform. It also appears that the Prime Minister, Mohammed Shi al-Sudani, said, laid, said, laid the foundation for basic visions, ideas that are reflected in the lives of all Iraqis, including creating a culture of transparency, of course, man, integrity. Are, aren't, isn't that an interesting term that some people don't seem to want to talk about? But integrity is a big thing in business, no different than what we do here with Militia Man and Crew. Uh, and it matters, affects Iraq's reputation positively, just as ours does. Also reflects re and reflects a di international support and the creation of investment environment in Iraq to attract more of those international companies. And guess what? These are the fruits of reform that the Sudanese reaped as a result of the positive repercussions of the government's program. I know that's a lot said, but the bottom line is it's very positive. Um, they're talking about transparency, they're talking about integrity, and they're talking about um, results, reaping results. And that's what Al Sudani has been doing for the last year and eight months and then some. So the, min the view that many will take globally will, re will basically re resonate and reverberate in a manner that will be directly related in the support of the future of Iraq's financial system, the regions, and internationally. We all have talked about it, man. It's going to be a benefit to the region. Well, firstly, Iraq, the region, and internationally. There's an abundance of support on many fronts that added with this shows it, it is not cleared it is now cleared for takeoff. Iraq is ready to go. That's what I see from it. Basically, all of these positivities are basically Iraq on the runway and ready to go, taken off. Uh, the, the runway, <laughs> in my opinion, what they've done and what this describes is clear. International flights, for instance, have begun to arrive from places, China and different countries, all different countries are starting to come in international flights. That's a big move, you guys, because it's what? What is it called? It's international. So uh, Iraq right, is ripe for harvest, and so those, those fruits are going to be picked, and many people have already started that. Many of the big companies around the world have already set the stage. I mean, France is total, GE, da-da-da-da-da, many of those countries. But now there's going to be more, because why? Because of the construction. We talked about the World Bank, the IFC, right? We've talked about those in the past. Okay, um, basically, Iraq is no longer subject to being monitored and followed up by the International Financial Task Force. Okay, honest to God, you guys, that means they're no longer being monitored. I think the ISX is probably going to get a big boost because why? Because there's all kinds of uh, support, meaning that the corruption has been taken care of. Um, there's probably so many components I can't even talk about it tonight because it's just it's just too many. But the cool part is is that uh, that being uh, focused today at this time, man, it's like showtime. That's where I'm, I'm hoping that's what we're talking about. The governor of the Central Bank of Iraq receives a delegation from the International Financial Corporation or Finance Corporation, which is the IFC. Just got through mentioning it. His Excellency, the governor of the Central Bank of Iraq, Moshin Alak, received a delegation from the International Finance Corporation affiliated with the World Bank Group. Really? Go figure. Some of the powerful, most powerful companies. They bought a cement company or they bought into a cement company. Those two entities did. I have a link in Patreon with Militia Man and Crew. Uh, shows it. You can, it's simple. You can find it. You can Google it. You can find it on your own. But come in anyway. All right. So um, during the meeting, the reality of a bilateral cooperation in the field of banking sector was discussed and its development in line with international technologies, in addition uh, to presenting the latest developments regarding the long term plans implemented by the Central Bank in cooperation with International Finance Corporation, IFC.
So they, they discussed the models, the financing, the lending activities, the investment diversifications that they're talking about. They reviewed national lending strategies proposed by the central bank to finance small and medium enterprises, which is what? The backbone of any country economy. Everybody knows that. The delegation expressed their readiness to cooperate in the field of exchanging exper experiences and training. Of course, you got to have training, you have to have development. And they are to go, what? Take care of their banking staff, uh, develop banking supervision tools in line with efforts of the central bank and the international institutions in supporting the private sector and economic activities. And there you go again. It's back to all about that private sector. During the meeting, the Excellency the Governor emphasized that ideas are generated and launched within the Central Bank of Iraq, and the role of international organizations is to transform them into programs and plans that facilitate their implementation, appreciating the efforts of the international institutions in providing support for the Central Bank projects that serve the private sector and stimulate the Iraqi economy. Where did this come from? The Central Bank of Iraq. It's the Information Office. When was that? That was today. Powerful. By the way, uh, article is International Finance Cooper Corporation of IFC is the private sector arm of the World Bank Group and shares its mission to reduce global poverty. They're all about the money in the sense of getting it to the citizens. Financial inclusion is about taking care of citizens. Private sector, talking about employment, taking care of the citizens. Hydrocarbon law hasn't been seen yet. Turkey hasn't got any oil yet. Is everybody waiting for al Alaq to show a valuation of their currency by bringing and providing hard currency for the country? It will support that. What is that? That means that they have a currency that's going to be valued that has support. International expert, by the way, and international expert reviews the passive development road project, the locations of industrial cities. Think about it. They're going to build, I think, about 10. Let's call it 10. Could be 15. It could be more. But I'm pretty sure I'm on the low side of 10. It says that the Ministry of Transport announced on Sunday that the director of the General Railway Company, uh, Mr. Jawad, briefed the United Nations industrial cities expert. So they got experts involved, Alessandro Flamini, Flamini, I should say, on the pass of the development road project and the locations of the industrial sittings, describing the project as an important economic nerve for Iraq. Uh, they go on to say, you know, wh what's going on with this. They've established uh, them along the development road project, but here they say this, the designs for the development road project were reviewed in accordance with the directors of the Ministry of Transport of Iraq, of course. Uh, his name is Al Sarawi, and the United Nations expert listened to a detailed explanation of the project and its economic benefits in addition to the ministry's promising projects. Okay. Uh, the development road project has attracted many major international companies and institutions as it constitutes an important economic backbone for Iraq and is considered a future tributary to placing Iraq at the forefront of economic countries that constitute a global economic hub. A global economic hub, right? So they're not gonna be doing that with an exchange rate of about 1310, and we all should have a, enough knowledge to know that it doesn't work that way. If they were going to do it, they could have done it a long time ago, and they haven't done that yet. And Al Sudani is on the cards, in the cards as stating, the Iraqi dinar is stronger. The delete the project of the three zeros is still exists. It's not can't be lost. Transport reveals new details about the development road project. So here's another article that completely supports it. The development road is proceeding at a confident pace. So obviously it's underway. Um, in in direct su supervision and care of the prime minister and the chairman of the Supreme Committee for the Development Road. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But think about it. Last week witnessed the completion of a signing of a report with the ministries of oil and electricity not to conflict with the development path. And it was agreed to end all technical conflicts along the path from the Port of Fa to Fish Harbor with two ministries. And the technical details of feeding the project with electrical current were also agreed upon. So they're going to, it sounds like they've 
adjusted and made sure that there's certain things and you're going to see that in this next sentence it says he continues the committee also held an important technical meeting with the department of uh, mine affairs and the ministry of environment and the place where mines and military projects tiles were located projectile military projectiles were located were identified and a plan was drawn up to remove them from the course of the project so the committee basically is is has held important technical meetings with the Department of Mines and Affairs, and that is really big, okay? The approval of 10 governance on the project's route from Alf Alpha Port uh, to the borders of the city of Mosul has been completed, pointing out the approval gives greater impetus for the project to proceed with designs at a faster pace and move to detailed designs and tenders. You guys, obviously, there's no stopping this. Uh, the committee has overcome many challenges for companies and there's a clear pr progress in the project. And they go on to say that Iraq passed the stage of difficulties in implementing the development path and the new project now enjoys national support and support par excellence as all governments will participate in it. Okay, so they've already, that's past tense, you guys. That's what I mean. There's no stopping it. They're underway. The project has also received an international attention. I think you're probably like going, what? You're kidding me? I think so. As all countries have a desire to be a part of a particular, excuse me, all countries have a desire to be a part of and participate or support the project. Not surprising. Uh, noting that large, reputable international companies have expressed their willingness to work on the project, and this gives more reliability that the project is capable of success and implementation. Iraq will choose the best offers. Well, we've already known that they have the best offers. Well, many of them, and if there's going to be more, so be it. Um, who do they have? Basically, here again, international attention of countries to be a part of the development project. We know that there are many international companies already, and they're involved, and they um, are even higher than just companies, as noted by the World Bank, uh, the IFC, we talked about both, uh, the U.S. Treasury, not talked about, but recently, we sure know that they are involved, the IMF, the World Bank, the World Customs Organization, w Tra World Trade Organization, all of them have been involved, and you can... It's in, it's in print, you guys. Get ready. I'm sure uh, you should be. I know I'm getting there. <laughs> it, it's uh, it's really exciting. It's almost kind of scary, to be fair. Uh, transport. What does that talk about? Transport reveals details about the development road project. Again, well, what do they enjoy? They enjoy the national support and international interest. Again, that reiterating what this article said. The development road project is proceeding at a confident pace under the direction and supervision of the Prime Minister, the Chairman of the Supreme Committee for the Development Road. So just last week, last week witnessed the completion of signing of a report with the Ministry of Oil and Electricity, all of which you're going to need. But note to the, to not to forgive me not to conflict with the development path and it was agreed to end all technical conflicts along the path from the port of alpha to um the vishk harbor with two ministries and technical details of feeding the project with electrical current were also agreed upon so i think this was in conjunction with the last article the committee has also held an important technical meeting with the department of affairs and the ministry of environment and the places where the mines and military projectiles were located and identified. We talked about that. The approval of 10 governments from the port of file through the borders of the city in Mosul has been completed, so they finished it. Approval gives great impetus for the project to proceed with designs at a faster pace and even to detailed, uh, and even with detailed designs, etc. So they went through all that. Um, basically, it says they're receiving the international attention. Again, uh, it's, but this is about um, the electricity and etc. So hey, everybody, um, pay attention. It's fascinating. We've we've witnessed an amazing amount of work in a very short period of time. Uh, what's left? We we do know that we haven't seen the 2024, uh, 23, 24, 25, but the portion of 2024, the investment side of the budget yet. We haven't seen that in the Gazette. They missed two days where they could have published, and they haven't done that. So we're going to see how they work it out. Do they have to have the president to uh, sign off on that budget? 
of those amendments and they said specifically in the news they don't need to do that but technically I believe they have I believe that they have about 15 days from the third to be able to finish that and or it becomes law so Rashid does not even have to say anything about it so they have a window of opportunity that we're paying attention to because they haven't exposed what they've done completely but they haven't set it up for that the 2024 budget investment projects that they're talking about they probably got contracts that they have to do they talk about the pharmaceutical industry they talk about building hospitals residential cities commercial industry industrial cities all of those things they need to get sorted and they need to get paid okay iraq can't have or won't have other entities that are coming in and commit if they know that they don't have um, the freedom of capital movement one of the things about freedom of capital movement, uh, you kind of need the IMF Article 8 compliance. <laughs> and that's what we're waiting for, which is a real effective exchange rate. And I think these guys are about ready to expose that. Uh, I think that uh, Al Sudani, I think Tave Sami, I think um, Al Alak from the Central Bank of Iraq, uh, all of them have this in um, their eyes to see come to fruition and very quickly. That's my game on it. So anyway, thank you guys for being with us. Hit that like, subscribe button, and by all means, uh, to keep everything going and into the future uh, for other things for um, support, uh, you can hit the buttons for PayPal, Zelle, and Venmo. And uh, just know that it goes to keeping this content moving. Thank you very much. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.